Welcome to FoxSports.com's draft coverage right outside Radio City Music Hall. I'm Laura Oakman, joined by Brian Billick, Charles Davis. The first quarterback was off the board with the 16th pick. The Bills moving down from 8 to 16. Would anybody have made any money? Did anybody say E.J. Manuel was going to be the first quarterback to go? A, a Academy Award-winning producer told me that anytime you start a film, you start with the understanding that nobody knows anything. The same as the NFL. How, uh, who saw this? You know, the question was how many quarterbacks could go. It was a given that it was going to be Geno Smith, and we all saw the, you know, all these guys have potential. But for E.J. Emanuel, now this has got to bring into huge, and it's the Buffalo Bills. This brings into question how good is Ryan Nassib, that his coach passed on the Buffalo Bills, and with Geno Smith, who's in that conference, who knows him better other than a competitor that says, no, I think E.J. Emanuel is the guy. I think beyond the fact that, and I'm intrigued by E.J. Emanuel, interesting athlete, Steve McNairish, and obviously has got some development to do, but what does this say about Ryan Nassib and Geno Smith? I know a lot of people look at E.J. Emanuel and think, oh, athlete, read option, all that. Most of his plays came from the pocket. I mean, he gets damned by the idea that he looks the part can hoof it a little bit, but he's not as fast as people think. That's not his main main focus. He's much more of a pocket guy. But right now, somewhere, Kevin Cobb's going, already? Yeah. I just signed here, all right? I mean, already, and here it comes. And it's a first-round quarterback. How long do you sit a first-round quarterback? Done. Okay. He's a starter it. now, today, that's now. It. It's over. So that's how it works nowadays. You don't sit there. It, how, long did it, how long did Eli Manning sit? Six games? Yeah, and, and that I mean, was when you had long. a Kurt Warner, you know. And Josh, obviously... Josh Freeman sat, sat there for right. six or seven games in Tampa Bay. It doesn't take long. For the most part, they give these guys the ball in o OTAs. Is he ready right now? Is he a plug-and-play kind of guy? Yeah. It doesn't matter. The reason what, I, right? I'm sorry, Laura. The only reason I say that is just because of where he was drafted. We don't think any of these quarterbacks are ready. I think in the pre-draft pre analysis, tell me if I'm wrong, Coach. Did you have any real feeling like, okay, if I get this guy, I'm ready to plug him in and go right now? And pick any quarterback in this draft. Uh, uh, Doug or, or, or Joe Flacco wasn't supposed to start. Wasn't supposed to start, first, so we but don't know. Kyle Bowler got hurt and ended up going with Joe Flacco. Obviously, a good thing to do. The hard part is, okay, go ahead and start Kevin Cobb. All right, the clock is ticking. Quickly. How good do you have to be, and when do I go to the other guy? And and you got to also run the risk now. Once he comes in, the guy looks good enough. The players are going, when's this going to happen? Yeah, Come on, guys. Yeah, I mean, you had run the risk of it's. It, this is E.J. Emanuel's team pretty quickly. But I got I to say, your question is right there out front and center. Is he ready? I think you've nailed it, Laura, because that is the, the ultimate question that has to be answered by Buffalo and E.J. Emanuel. But they answered it already by saying we're taking him in this spot. He's going to have to be ready and ready to go. And the beauty for him, he actually gets OTAs. He gets mini camp. He gets to dive right in. They can hand him ball game one if they want to. You brought up an interesting point about the relationship between Marone and Nassib. We thought that was a done deal because of that. At the eighth spot, most people thought the Bills were going to go there. What does that say? All of a sudden, you're looking at, at, at Nassib as a quarterback, and you see his college coach pass. You're sitting in the war room right now as a coach and sitting there talking to your GM. All of a sudden, are you going, wait a minute? Is it, are we looking at this guy a little bit differently now because his coach just passed? If you, you can love the kid and, and, and what he's done for you, but at the end of the day, if you take a Andrew Luck, you take an RG3, okay, I understand it. I'm not saying you could take Geno Smith and people understand it. You took E.J. Emanuel. To me, that's a, that's a huge – and that doesn't mean that Ryan Nassib shouldn't be taken in the second round, but I guarantee you people around the league, regardless of their evaluation of Ryan Nassib, have to go – wow, we, we, we need to rethink this a little bit because if that's what they think of him, maybe we need to rethink our evaluation. Yeah, but Blore brings up a great point, too. Everyone thought he would, he would end up going to Buffalo because of the coach. Eight might have been too rich in terms of getting it, but many people thought they could get back in and late in the first round and get him. But at 16, he still doesn't go. All right, eight picks later. Now, if you really believe in him, 16 is probably okay. They still don't pull the trigger on him. Your point's well taken. And Laura for God, it's it not well. the slam dunk right. that we're saying. It's not any one of them. Absolutely, it's E.J. Man. Yeah, I think it's, this is uh, going to be interesting. That bring, it brings into sharp question as to what the evaluation of Ryan Nassib is. So you're saying Doug Marone can't go to the Nassibs for Thanksgiving now <laughs> because they thought that they we thought we were tight, Coach. That's we one less we gave you four years. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you as always, and thank you for watching for all your draft coverage. Make sure to keep it logged down right here to FoxSports.com.